Hello and welcome to the Bruce Wagner Show. This is episode 501, and today I have with me Diana Acosta Miller. Hello. Visiting from Paris here in New York, and um, she is with a company called TripsEurope.com, uh, which rents furnished apartments in Paris, short term and long term, right? That's correct. Okay, I yeah. stole your line. But anyway, that what we're going to talk about today, though, is a search engine optimization, SEO. Many of you may not know what that is, but you want it, trust me. Um, search engine optimization is basically getting your business or charity or whatever it is that you're promoting to come up first on Google when people search on Google, All right, which is obviously very, very valuable. Now, I'm not talking about, I want to be very clear, I'm not talking about the ads. People get this confused because when they talk about uh, advertising on Google, that's when you buy ads. It's called AdWords. And those are the sponsored links that appear over on the right-hand side. And some, a few of them appear even above the search results sometimes. Those are paid ads. And we'll talk about those later at the end. But um, what I'm talking about is different. What I'm talking about is when someone searches, it, for example, if you are in the hotel business and someone searches hotel, you want yours to be the first one that comes up on the results, of course, because you're going to get a lot more business that way. And I'm talking about search results, so we're not talking about money involved and, and not talking about paid advertising. Anybody can have an ad budget and pay for ads and show up on Google. And then, I mean, it's, it's strictly a matter of how much you decide to bid for that ad. So that's a whole other thing. But I'm talking about the unpaid, not ads, just the actual, what we call organic search results that come up, okay? Everybody wants this. It's like the hen that lays the golden egg because, you know, of course, there's a reason why people are paying. I mean, somebody told me Target paying a million dollars a day for AdWords. Wow. Ads. Well, there's the money that, you know, carelessly, they are getting results. Everybody uses Google, and I don't know how many billions of people uh, hits a day they get in searches and so on. But everybody uses Google, and that's how we find things. And the, everything is on the Internet. So Google, you know, there's a reason behind it. All right. So anyway... It's very, very, very valuable for your business, your ad, or whatever it is you're promoting to come up very high in the search results. Everybody wants this. So as a result, there's a whole industry that's evolved around it. They even they call it SEO, search engine optimization. And really, you know, I hate to say it, but there's really only one search engine nowadays, and it's Google. Right. For now, that's the way that things are. I mean, <laughs> sorry, Microsoft and Yahoo, but... Google really is, uh, you know, has the vast majority of the market share in, in search engine stuff. Well, um, all right, so we're not talking about the paid ads. We're just talking about your results coming up first on Google. Um, <clears throat> there, let me explain a little bit about Google because everybody kind of uses it and they understand if you want to find something, you use Google. But there's more to Google that meets the eye. Um, I say... Uh, why Google is God. <laughs> Google's not God, but it's like, I always say, you know, um, Google's not God, but God gets his information from Google. The, the, the magic of Google that has created this multi-billion dollar industry is really, really, really simple. But I need to explain it to you because you need to understand how Google works in order to put it to use for yourself and really profit from it, Okay. So here's the basic idea, which I was telling you the other day. I was be beginning to um, explain it to you, but for you, for, for our audience, I'll explain. It. Basically, every website. I mean, I'm going to use. I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to use real simple uh, explanations. Very over, you know, highly oversimplified. But this is the basic idea. Um, and also, by the way, Google's formula. Their um, what do you call it? Algorithms that they use to determine what comes up first change. It's like a secret. It's like the Coca Cola recipe or the you know seven secret ingredients of Kentucky Fried Chicken or something like that. It's, it's highly, highly guarded secret, and it changes continuously because they're constantly improving it. I'll get into why that happens also. But the basic idea doesn't change. The basic idea still remains the same. And that's the billion, multi-billion dollar idea that made these two guys, you know, some of the richest men in the world. All right, here's the basic idea. <clears throat> Oversimplified, all right, explanation. Google is um, a set of machines or robots, okay, that go out there and basically read every website on the entire internet every night, 
or whatever it, on different varying schedules without getting too detailed. Um, sometimes it's every two weeks. It could be every 20 minutes. It depends on the website. But anyway, basically, let's just say overnight, Google robots read every website on the whole entire internet. Okay. Now, as you know, websites contain links. So your website might have a link to my website. Okay. Exactly. Now, what happens is if <coughs> pardon me if um, if your website has a link to my website, Google counts that as one vote for my website. Like a po it's like almost like a popularity contest. The, the basic idea behind this is if many websites link to my website, my website must be important. So it's like an importance rating, sort of like a popularity rating, but you know, uh, more about importance. So. Um, they scan every website on the internet virtually, and they count up all the links. Now, if you and also if you have like a hundred links on your website to mine, it only counts at once okay. because you only get one vote. Okay, so each website, which is a, a .com domain, I'm talking about .com domains by the way. It could be .com, .net, .org, whatever, but it has to be a top level domain. So if it's you know whatever um, you know. If it is, uh, let's see, tripseurope.com slash something something slash something something, that doesn't count as a separate domain. That's still all tripseurope.com, okay? So all of tripseurope.com and all of its pages underneath it, um, all the links to my website, get one vote, one count. All right, so now, then it, <laughs> that's like the basic idea of how it ranks it. Which website gets the most votes? Okay. Then it takes that information and it says, well, if I have um, tons of votes, then my website is more popular or whatever. Mine is more important. Then it's higher in the rankings. So the next night, <laughs> when it <laughs> when it reads every website on the internet, my vote counts for more than somebody else, some other website's vote. If you follow. So like, here's an example. If um, you know, whatever. If uh, ChelseaMarketSushi.com has a link to your website, you might get one point of popularity vote. If CNN.com links has a link to your website, you might get a thousand right. votes. Right. All right. So it's a weighted vote now. It's so it, the more popular the website is that link to you, the more important your website is. It makes sense in the real world. We would say, you know, a letter of recommendation from Bill my. The housekeeper would <laughs> be one thing. Our recommendation from Bill Gates is another thing. Exactly. So it's a weighted vote. Okay. All right. So it makes sense. And this is that is that's it. That's it. That's the basic idea of how Google works. So the result of that magical idea, it's so simple. It's like you know the best things in the world in the world are so so simple. But the magical results of that are if you want to know what's the most important, what's the most popular, what's the best of anything, you can pretty much type it into Google. It's not just a search engine. People think it's just for searching the internet, but it's really magical. You can put in um, anything. You can put in Cell Phones New York and find the very, very best site on the internet about Cell Phones New York. And it's, it's based on, the reason it's magical is because it's human beings who are creating these links. So. Web people create websites. They create website content. So if the most people are who are mentioning that term are have linking to that website, it's the best right now. And Google has also uh, evolved tremendously to the point where it's it really is updated like almost instantly, virtually instantly. I can post a blog post and it'll show up in Google within 20 minutes. It's crazy how fast this whole process works. So, all right, that's the basic idea behind Google, and you need to understand that before you can. If you want to figure out how to get your business first on the search results, you need to understand a little bit about the mechanics of how it works behind the scenes. All right. Now, um, let's see. Um, all right. So this thing, this idea of importance, is called page rank. So every website has um, a page rank. Google calls it page rank, and that is, it, I think it's, it goes on a scale from zero to 10, or zero to something like Google.com is something like 9.0, or 9.0 or 10.0, maybe it's the only one that's 10.0, something like that, but there's a page rank, so obviously it's, that's what I was describing, the higher your page rank, if you get a link to your site from a, pa from a site that has a 9.0 web, uh, sorry, 9.0 page rank, 
that's a really, really, really valuable link. It might be nine, I'm just making up numbers, I don't know, maybe 9,000 times as important as getting a link um, on a website that has a page rank of one. So okay. I have a question. Yeah. For example, if we get a request for someone that mm -hmm. wants to uh, link up with us, should I check the ranking of that page? I mean, do I click on mm. the link and see where that that is in perspective to like nine, eight, five before accepting it? <laughs> very good question. That is a very good question. Um, and I want you to hold that question okay. because um, the answer is if you get an email from somebody who wants to link up with you and trade links with you, don't want to do it under any circumstances whatsoever. Okay. And I'll, so hold that question. Don't check that off because okay. we're going to get back to that because okay. that's that's covered later. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that. Perfect. And I'll, we'll explain that in a minute. Okay. But that's a great, great question. Um, you do want to, I mean... We'll come. Okay, Let, let's just continue on because right, okay. <laughs> that's going to be kind of answered. It'll, it'll be made clear here when I get to this next part. Okay. All right, so that's what page rank is. Again, we're not talking about paid ads, Google AdWords. That's going to be a separate thing altogether. We're talking about the, the organic results. Um, now, I'm going to talk about two things that you um, you don't really want to do. There are because everybody wants to ha be first on Google. There's an entire industry created of consultants, you know. Basically, I, what I always say is, if I know one thing more than you do, I'm the consultant. Right. You pay me. That's correct. If you know one thing more than me, you're the consultant. I agree. You know, if you can lift a bigger dumbbell, you're the trainer. Right. Okay, whatever. Anyway, that's how the world works. So if I know anything more than you, I'm the consultant. You pay me. And I and, it, and I could just be I could be BSing my way, you know how. how you know that happens, obviously. Tons and tons and tons of things are going on like that, where if you just talk a good talk and you sound like you know what you're talking about, you can pay me. That's right. And you don't know if, and it's like a, a car mechanic, you don't know if I know anything. I've never seen a car before. All exactly. right. So what happens is there are uh, SEO consultants, and I'm not saying that they are all bad, but, it, but I am saying that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of SEO scams and manipulations. All right. So any kind of an SEO scam or manipulation is not going to work. Basically, I'm just saying don't do it because it's not going to work anyway. You can pay money to do it. You can you can read like how to things about how to manipulate the system, which it's kind of is what we're doing, but in a different way. We're doing it in a legitimate way that is per totally permissible by Google. You know. <laughs> I mean, Google has a lot of power. Google obviously controls all this, but um, they have to eliminate people who are absolutely trying to, you know, automate it, use automated systems to manipulate it. Because if they didn't, then their results would all be skewed. Their, Google would have no value. They would really destroy the value of Google. The whole benefit of it would be gone if just whoever comes up with a, an automated robot that can manipulate it, it, it would be irrelevant. You understand? Right. The rankings wouldn't mean anything. Right. So. They don't allow um, manipulations, automated manipulations, and they, that's, why, that's one of the reasons why their algorithms change all the time. All right. So for example, um, there are these things called link farms, which are simply, you know, because of course, when you figure out how it works, the links are what you code, why, why, not, why don't you just sit, set up a thousand you know, computers, a thousand websites, 10,000 websites that all have links to you? <laughs> you know, and it doesn't work that way because, first of all, well, each one only counts for one vote and so on and all that. But what happens is Google now has formulas to look for that. <laughs> they can spot it. They have really sophisticated ar artificial intelligence, really, that's going out there and reading those web pages and seeing, is this a legitimate website yeah. or is this just a link farm. A link farm is simply a website set up that has nothing but links on it. You know, simply for the purpose of manipulating Google, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, it's easy to spot those. A human being can look at it. So what they've done is they've studied what they all have in common and they've seen the traits of them and they go, okay, if, it's, if it meets these qualifications, boom, 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 it's a link farm. And what do you think they do? They ban that. They completely eliminate it from their search index. Wow. And the links that they're linking to get banned as well. And people are actually paying for this service? Yeah, yeah, yeah people are actually paying for the service. Okay. And, you know, so yeah, they pay, like, they, they sell for a certain price, they get so many links, like, you know, whatever. 
it's it's absolute insanity. You know, and it's kind of like everything in life. If you try and scam your way to the top, you're going to fall on your face. So instead of becoming first on the search engine results, you're not going to be on Google at all. At all. They could put in your name with your middle name and your birth date and the town you're born in, and they won't find you mm -hmm. because, you know, <laughs> they're not going to find your business because if your domain name gets banned from Google, they can't find you, even if they put in the exact name. Wow. So you don't want that to happen. You obviously don't want to get no. banned from Google. You're trying to do the opposite. Exactly. So don't do that. Don't, don't buy links. Don't... And I, I highly recommend you don't do those link exchange programs. There's a million link exchange programs. You sign up for them and they, sign, they send you emails and they say, you know, exchange links with me, put a link on your site to my site. Well, they're onto that because obviously that's another manipulation. And what's happening is if your site has nothing to do with the industry that their site is in, or if they're linking to so many different things that are not related, Google has algorithms for that too. They figure it out. Okay. It's really not hard to figure out. So don't do it. Don't do it. It doesn't really work. And it, it really may get you banned from Google, and you don't want that. All right. So there are a lot of other uh, what I call SEO scams and manipulations you want to avoid too. Things that, you know, these... These uh, nitwits will recommend like um, repeating keywords, like putting keywords in the smallest possible font on some hidden page and having 10,000 copies of the same word over and over and over again. But that might have worked in 1970. But you know, they are onto that. Okay. Um, that'll get your website banned from Google, okay. and you'll have to go through a petitioning process to get them to restore your site to Google, and you have wow. to prove that you're. It'll have to be reviewed by a human being to verify that you're actually not doing anything that's you know scammy or spammy or whatever on your website. Um, the next thing is. Um, Keywords like white on white. They put white font that, on white yeah. background. Exactly. No, don't do that. <laughs> That's automated. It's so easy. Their computer can easily t detect that you're doing that. Uh -huh. And boom, you'll be banned from, you know, your website will be banned from Google. Okay. Don't do any of that stuff. All right. The next thing is not something that's bad. It's just something that's kind of useless. And that mostly, <laughs> not completely, and I'll explain. It's called meta tags. M E T A tags. T A G S. Meta tags. So, if your SEO consultant tells you, well, here's what I'm going to do for you. By the way, <laughs> let me tell you a little quick little story. Um, a friend of mine uh, who owns a bed and breakfast uh, business um, wanted help with his you know, search engine optimization and all that. He, uh, he chose not to listen to my advice, which is fine, totally fine. My advice doesn't come with strings. And, um, but he decided that he would rather hire this uh, SEO consultancy in New Jersey. And so he paid them $5,000 up front and then $1,500 a month. And on top of that was his Google AdWords budget, on top of that. Right. The only thing they did was they created these meta tags for his website, is what they were telling him he was, what they told him he was going to do, they were going to do for him. They, he created these meta tags for their website and he, they increased his Google AdWords budget. Well, he got a lot more hits. Of course he did. Yeah. He was paying more money. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, duh. I said, why don't you pay me $1,500 increase your budget and you'll get more hits too. Right. You could pay anyone $1,500 and increase your budget. If you're going to increase your AdWords budget, of course you're going to get more hits from your AdWords budget. Exactly. But that's a whole other story. Those hits are not real. It's like, it's like traffic. It's like if you had a retail store and um, you could buy, you could hire people to walk into your store and leave. That's what it's That's like. True, right? That's exactly what it's like. If you, you pay $100 and I'll have 20 people walk through your store and leave, walk through your store and leave. Oh my gosh, you could have 10,000 people walk through your store and leave. They don't buy a single thing. Exactly. A couple of them shoplift, but nobody buys anything. And you, you could, the more money you pay, the more traffic going through your store. Is that what you want? Right. No, no. Useless hits. People who are not even looking for what you're selling coming to your website, you're buying that, you're absolutely wasting your money, totally wasting your money. So th some of these, <laughs> this is a search engine optimization consultant who's, all he did was he took his, you know, he took, he wanted access to his AdWords account and he bumped up his budget by, you know, a thousand percent exactly. and bought a lot more ads and got a lot more hits. And he's like, oh, wow, look at all the hits I'm getting. Oh my gosh. So what exactly are the meta tags? Okay, meta tags. That's the other thing that they use. It's a buzzword that um, is simply in the code, in the, in the basic HTML code for the website, you will see these little uh, HTML codes, and they're called meta tags. They're, j they're literally just tags that the web browser can read, 
computers can read, but they're invisible on the page. They're not for the reader to read. Mm. Okay, and they're just to tag the page for automated purposes. All right. So um, there are two tags that are useful, and well, three. No, two. <laughs> two tags that are useful and very, very important that I want to talk about. The rest of them are useless, completely useless. They are, once again, they're like ancient technology. Um, this is how things used to work way back when website, when, you know, HTML was invented. The very first search engines used them. And they're uh, meta tags for things such as have keywords in there, and you can put your keywords in there. Well, Google doesn't use that. People think they can manipulate. If, if they have a, a website that sells, um, you know, real estate, they think that they can put words in their keywords like sex. So when so many people search for sex, they're going to find my site about real estate. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't work that way. Google's way out of that. Google does not use your keywords. They make their own keywords. Their computer reads your site, okay. and their computer will tell you what your site's about. Okay. Which obviously is an improvement. It makes the whole thing better. Okay. So Google creates its own keywords based on the content of your site. They don't ask you to come up with your own keywords. That's obviously you know ancient, ancient technology. So keywords is one example of a meta tag. And then there's a whole lot of other meta tags too. And SEO consultants will tell you that they're doing all this tedious work on creating meta tags for you, it's absolutely useless. There's only two meta tags that are important that Google does use. You know, your permission, I will. I'll get an example of what it is. I'll right, get up on the screen here. Um, if I go to Google and I put in your site. Trips this Europe. Trips Europe. Trips. And I'm going to put a space in between it as two different words. Trips, space, Europe. That's what happens. When I Google it, um, maybe I should spell Europe right. But either way, it comes up. It comes up. All right. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Let me see. What did I do around here? Oh, see? Interesting. See, when I put in trips, space, Europe, yours doesn't come up. Well, I mean, no, it came up. did it come up on the yeah, first page? It did. Let me look again. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Trips, space, Europe. Yep, it's right there on the top. Oh, Where? Yeah. It doesn't. It sure doesn't. See? This is the goal. Okay. Yours doesn't come up. When I put in Trip Space Europe, it doesn't come up on the first page. Let's look at the second page. It should be a different color because we went there earlier. Um, it's not on page two. Not on page three. You're going to be a perfect guinea pig because we're going to get you right at the top of page That's one. That's exactly where I want to be. By the end of this project, you're going right. to be right at the top of page Today. one. When I put in Trips Europe, you're not even coming up. And that's the title of your company. Right. That's Correct. not even like Apartment Rentals Paris. Right. This is like the no. freaking title of exactly. your company. So if I knew the name of your company, I couldn't find you. Right. Oh, yeah. That's, that's true. That's not good. That's not good. Not good. Now, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put in Trips Without a Space because that's their name, TripsEurope.com, with no space. It better come up there first. Is. And there, of course, it comes up first when you put it in. As the actual domain name, of course, it's going to come up first always. All right, so there's your website. Now, if you can see here. So, what I'm going to do, if you take, um, if you go to your own website, your own company's website, right. and in your browser, you go up to, like, for example, if you're in Firefox, you go to View, and then go down to, is it on View, or is it, or is it Edit? Uh, wait a minute. You just did it. On yeah. It's a, oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> See, even I can miss it. Anyway, the bottom of the view menu, the next to the last one is called page source. View page source. That's what you want. Internet Explorer has a similar button, too. You can also right click on the page itself and do view page source. That's what you want. And boom, this is what you get. I don't know. You probably can't see that at home. But what it is, it's the actual HTML that the website is sending to the to the browser. This is the computer language, basically, that the that the browser is sending. So at the top of it, you'll see you know document type stuff, and then you see in brackets HTML, and then in brackets head, and then below that meta. Anything that starts meta, that's a meta tag. Ah. So these are these are tags, and they're called meta tags. They're just like information about the page. All right, so. Um, these are meta tags. Uh, up here it says um, meta tag, HTTP equivalent, content type, blah, 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 character set. Some details about the language it's in and what character sets to use. These are for the browser. Then you've got meta name equals description, content equals. All right, now this is the 
th there's two meta tags that are important. You've also got keywords. It's okay to put keywords in and things like that. That's fine. But just know that Google's really not using them. That's really not important. The important there's two important meta tags, and they are, you know, bracket meta space name equals quote description quote space content equals quote, and then whatever's in between those quotes. Now, <coughs> and then the other one is title, which is a slightly different. It's not. Uh, it doesn't start out meta. It's it's bracket title bracket, and then whatever the title of your page is bracket slash title bracket. Okay, so the two meta tags that are important are title and description. If you don't know how to do this yourself, you can have um, any geek who designed your web page or, you know, any, any, it's like one of the most basic things that a web page designer can do. If they don't know how to do that, you're not talking to a web page designer by any means. Um, but you want to be able to set that. I mean, you really, you, you know, you're, any web designer can do this for you or you know, a lot of geeks can do it for you too. But the important thing about the title and the description is this. I'll show you. And I'm going to alt tab back over here to your page, or actually to the Google search results. Now, see, this is the Google search results for your page. And up here, it says um, tripseurope.com is a Paris apartment rental company in Europe, France, and Paris. We rent studio one bedroom, two bedroom, three, and more apartments in deluxe, dot, 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 dot. Okay. And that is coming straight from this line. So the reason it's important, this does not determine the ranking of, of it on Google, but this is what people are going to see. So when we do get it to come up first, hopefully, right. where, whenever, wherever it comes up on Google, this is what they're going to read. So it has to be something that's going to, it's like a billboard for right. your company. It, you know, I, I don't think you really want it to say studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three, exactly. you don't want to waste half right. of your text you know, in redundant stuff. This is really important. Yeah, this is the specific. grabber. Right. So from a marketing standpoint, you want the descript you want the title. We'll get we'll get to the title in a minute. The title has to be important too. But the description has to be something that they read about your company and say, that's the one I want. Right. Oh that's gonna fill my need. Right. That's right. the one I want. All right. Now that's why the description is important because the description is the description that they're gonna see in Google before they ever click. Exactly. And that's what's gonna make them make the decision to click on your company. Okay. Correct. Now the title, the title, notice the title is not the title that comes up on here. The title uh, meta tag is the title that comes up on your actual site up here in the actual title bar at the right. very top of the browser. Up there is this beautiful Paris apartment for Paris vacation rental, etc., etc. That's the title of the window. And if you see here on the title line, that's where that's getting it. Beautiful oh, Paris apartment, da, 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 da. Okay. All right, now, that seems a little trivial, but it's not. It's actually probably the most important SEO tip ever. Write this down. Okay. The title meta tag must contain the most important keywords people will search for because Google gives very, very, very high importance to the title of that page. So the title that shows up in the blue or brown or whatever color you have it set to, title of the browser window when you're looking at that web page, right. that title, every, like if you make a list of the top 10 keywords that people were going to search for, like apartment, rental, studio, whatever, um, all of those words need to be contained in that title. Okay. So when they say Paris Studio, you better find the word Paris in here and you better find the word studio in there right. or it's not the best title. Okay. The title has to be uh, contain every one of those keywords and it should contain them in order. So if you want, you know, Paris Vacation Rental is a phrase that they'll search for, they need to be in that order, Paris Vacation Rental. Okay. And contain all the keywords that are the most important. So the title is absolutely critical. That's real okay. important. All right. Okay. The title is important because of that. The description is important because that's what they're going to see on Google before they click. Exactly. All right. So, but all the other meta tags, they're pretty much absolutely irrelevant. Just, you know, let the computer generate whatever it generates and they really don't matter. Google, in, in, the, in the terms, I'm sorry, in the sense of, from the standpoint of search engine optimization, they don't matter. Google ignores them okay. for those purposes. All right. Now, those are the things that really don't matter, okay. <laughs> except for the title and the description. Those two, okay. Here's what matters, okay? This is what makes your site come up first. Legitimate links, LL, legitimate links, all right? 
So these are not SEO scams or manipulations. These are not link farms. These are not repeating keywords, white on white, blah, blah, blah. No. Okay. This is legitimate links. Okay. How do you get legitimate links? Exactly. Everybody wants them. How do you get legitimate links? Okay, and I'll tell you how. And besides, and it's also, it's not just legitimate links. It's like you're trying to get into Yale. You need letters of recommendation. Okay. You don't really need that many letters of recommendation. The truth be the truth be told, you don't need that many letters of recommendation. You just need really good letters of recommendation from really important people. Okay. So you need legitimate letters of recommendation. You need legitimate links from the most important sites. Okay, how do you do that? Okay. Here's how you do that. Okay. Take notes, people. All right. How do you get them? You get them from forums and blogs etc. All right. Now here are the steps you take. First, make a short list of the best keywords for your business. Keywords or phrases. Okay? So whatever your business is, <coughs> um, make the short list of the top 12. Let's say the top 12 words or phrases. So, you know, phrase phrases may include vacation rentals, if you're in that business, um, Paris apartments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But make make a list of twelve words and or phrases. They could be single words, okay. you know, like um, apartments or whatever, or rentals with an S. Things like that. Single words and or phrases, and prioritize them. Okay. Put a little number next to each one. After you make the list, you might they might not have come to your mind in the in the proper order of right. which is the most important. Like, what do you think your customers and here's a, by the way, here's a way to get that list too, is ask your customers. The actual customers have already paid, exactly. the check cleared, they right. already stayed at your place. You know, call them up and say, by the way, when you, if you were looking for my business and you went to Google, what would you type into Google? And they'll tell you. Exactly. And that's how you make that list. That's how you make I mean, list. you can make the list from your own, the top of your head, but I'm telling you, this is a better way. Exactly. You call your customers up who are already paying you and say, if you were trying to find my business and you didn't know the name of it, what would you type into Google? Right. Or well, how did you find my, my business? If yeah, you if they remember. They'll probably say, I don't remember. Right. But So you just say, if you were going to look for another one, you know, and you didn't know the name of my business, exactly. what would you type into Google? And they'll go, well, um, I guess I would type in, um, you know, flat. And you're going to go, oh, my God, that wasn't even on my list. Right. And you find out that all your customers are typing in flat. Right. All right, there exactly. you go. That's right. it. Okay. Right. And then based on the votes of what they tell you, that's how you can prioritize them. All right. And it's important to prioritize this list, and here's why. Because you're going to start at the top of the list. Right. The first um, word that comes up, what's the first one that comes to mind for you? What would you just guess what would be the number one? I thought it would be a word for okay. for a part. Okay, furnished apartments. So if if it's furnished apartments, let's assume that, that everybody, all your customers, called, they all said, well, I would type in furnished apartments. Okay, so if that's your phrase, then here's what you do. <laughs> it's so simple. Step one. Well, this is actually step two because that was step right? one. Step, step one is to make that short list and, and the votes from your actual right. living, breathing customers. Right. Step two, that that's to prioritize them. Step two is type in the first one into Google. Okay. And that's what we're going to do now. All right. So I'm going to bring up Google here, and we're going to type in furnished apartments, was it? Yeah, I, I, I would think that you need to be specific as to where the furnished apartment would be. So probably furnished apartments in Paris. Paris. Okay. Right. So I'm going to do, let's we're gonna Paris, assume... Yeah. We're going to assume that uh, most of your customers said they went to Google furniture apartments. Are. Right. Okay, so that was that we let's. It's kind of like a cooking show. Exactly. Okay, this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Okay. Right. So what what came out of the oven was furnished apartments Paris. Right. Okay. okay. So here's step two: Google furnished apartments Paris. Okay. Put it in exactly the way they said they would, and boom. All right. Voila. Now you're gonna. Um, Here's your results. Now, as you, I don't know if you can see this at home, but this part up here is kind of like in a in an uh, beige or whatever, <laughs> like a eggshell color. Right. The, it says right here, sponsored links. Ignore those. Make they're invisible to you. These are, are sponsored links. These are the ones you pay for. Oh, these are okay. Google AdWords. Right. These people paid the most, wow. and, these, and these people paid the second most and the third most, and then they go down this list in order that way. Okay. Ignore that. Well, that's a whole other topic we'll come to later. Then you've got this section, which is local business results for furnished apartments in your Paris. Right. And these are these are actual businesses that have come up under that 
um, under that phrase. So those are your competition, really, probably. Yes, they are. You, okay. And then you look at what right below that. So you can see those are by a map. You see the Google map right. and then a list of each business. Kind of ignore that unless there's something that's not a competitor but like a directory of those. That might be one you want to target. But anyway, let's start here with the actual search results. Boom, 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 boom. All right? Right. Now, this is the hen that lays the golden egg. That's your gold mine. Those top results here. Let me scroll it down just a little bit. Okay, so starting here, right. um, those that's your gold mine. All right. Now, <coughs> what you need to do is you need to study each one of these, starting with the first one. Okay. okay? You, I mean, you, you you don't need to make the list because actually the list is right there. Right, but this exactly. list is your gold mine. I'm telling you. You start with the first one. And you visit that. What you can do is you can hold down the mouse button. I mean, sorry, hold down the control button, the CTRL button in the corner of your keyboard. Hold down control and click on the first one. And you can actually hold down control and click the second one and the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. Do five at a time. All right? And it opens, what that does is that it opens them all into tabs next to you. Right. So you go to the first tab and now you're looking at the first one, which is you. No, that's the, I wish it was. Isn't it? That's the first one is Logis, no. Oh, that's not you. No. Oh, that's that's like us, you. but the first tab is the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. There you're you right. Go. You're right. I had that open already. That's okay. Oops. Well, we're, we're visioning what's going to yeah. happen in the future when it we're done with happen. this. It will happen. Oh, it will be there. Okay. Right. Sorry. Well, anyway, the first one is this one, Logis. All right. Now, that's the first one, and that's the second one, and that's the third one, and so on and so on. Actually, that's part of the same one. So, anyway, you get the idea. There's, there's um, four different... These are the top four. All right. And they're all open. All right. So, what we do is we start with the first one. This is uh, this is an ongoing project that's going to take some time. Week after week, you have to put some time into it, but it's going to be well worth it. All right, you look at the first one, and you study the website. You study this website till you know it like the back of your hand, and here's what you're looking for. It's like an Easter egg hunt, okay? What you're looking for is ways that users can post content. Now, what's... Um, the most common ways users can post content are if the website happens to be a forum right. or a blog okay. or if it contains a forum or a blog or maybe even links to a forum or blog. If there's a tab, if there's somewhere, some way people can leave comments or feedback or there's a forum button where the, the co a community button often leads to forums and things like that. But you want to study that thing thoroughly because this is the number one site on Google about what it is that you're doing. So even if it's your competition, it doesn't matter. Right. As long as they allow public comment, that's what you have to find. All right. So you find the forums, you find the blog, you find some way that users can communicate with each other or post things, review hotels, whatever. Any way that users can post content. Then you look for the real winner. If you're that's the lottery ticket. The winning lottery ticket is if you can find a place where users can post content where they have a one link. So you can see that um, you know Betty Sue wrote about her stay at, at in Paris and blah 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 and she posted a link to it could even be to her own, you know web page or something, right. any link at all. Okay. Because that will tell you that users are allowed to post content or comments or whatever, and they're allowed to put a link. Um, a lot of them won't allow you to put a whole bunch of links because they, they, they figure that's spam. But if you can, if, if users are allowed, like approved users are allowed to post even one link, that's all you need. You just need one link. You need one link to your website. Ah. Okay? Now, <laughs> ah, all right. Okay. Now, there's... And, but th it's a little bit trickier than, than what seems. Okay, it's going to get a little... It's like a peeling away the layers of the end. All right. So we're talking about um, even if it's paid ads, sometimes you can buy a listing. It might be a directory of apartment rental places, and you can buy a listing. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's paid or unpaid, comments, listings, anything that you can post yourself and by any means possible. And I say, if they sell listings and you have to pay for it, do it. Okay. That will be money well spent. Okay. You know, s blowing away money on Google AdWords, if you don't know what you're doing, is absolutely 
just wait, flushing your money down the toilet. But buying a paid listing will allow a link to your site on the first site that comes up on Google. Now that's a gold mine. That will return your money a thousand times over. So if it's a directory that comes up first, definitely want to buy a listing on there. And look for other ways that you can post. Like I said, forums, blogs, and all that. All right, so going back to the Google search results, if you find, you know, if you're really lucky, somewhere on the first page, well, remember, the first one is the most important one. Okay. The second one is the second most important one. Correct. The eighth one, don't start at the eighth one. Right. Because the eighth one is the eighth importance. You've got to start at the top and work your way down. Yeah, how did the, if you notice the first one that comes up has two, has actually first and second. Yeah, the, it's indented. So, ah. yeah, uh, you can, the indented ones, you see they're both logist.com. Right. This is a sub page of it. Okay. You can just ignore the sub page of it. Okay. Uh, just ignore that. It doesn't really count. Okay. The first one is logist.com. The second, th again, this is a Google search that we just happened to do called Furnished Apartments Paris is what right. we searched for. Correct. The first one that really comes up is logist.com. The second one is parisianhome.com and then Paris Furnished Apartment. ParishFurnishedApartments.com Correct. And ParisAttitude.com and so on right. and so on and so on. Like I said, some of these may be your competition and some of them may be directories. Right. Some of them may be, you know, referral services or whatever. But these are the way you market. Exactly. You absolutely, if you can get on there and find a place to comment, post things, and have that, especially if it'll allow you a link. Even, but post it even if you don't have, a, even if it doesn't allow you to link on there. If it just allows you to be contacted by email, you know, you still might get referrals through that too. So it's definitely worth to post it anyway. Okay. But if they'll allow you to post a link, that's brilliant. Now, even if they don't allow you to post a link, a lot of these will have, like a lot of blogs and forums will have, um, if you go to your profile, there'll be a your profile tab or something, you can edit your profile, there'll be a signature thing, like an right. email signature. Right, you can right. put in your name. And be very discreet about this because you don't want to look spammy. But you can put in your name. And your link. So in the signature, they might not allow links in the content. If they do, do it. Only one link, though, and only your site, of course, or else it's useless. But if, if not, or even if they do, put it in the signature also. Put Diana Acosta Miller, tripseurope.com. Nothing else. Exactly. You don't want any ads or, you know, nothing that looks spammy. It just looks like a signature. Diana Acosta Miller, tripseurope.com. That's it. Okay. Be very discreet and professional. And make, make sure you put in HTTP colon slash slash tripseurope.com okay. because a lot of software will automatically convert that into a clickable link okay. if you do. And if you don't put that in before, it might not. Right. So you want it to be a clickable link for sure. All right. And then test it. Post something and then go back as a reader and see that it works. Okay. All right. Now, <coughs> repeat, repeat, repeat. You just keep doing that. You go down from the first one on up to the hundredth page. That's a, that's a project that is going to, you know, you could put in as much time as you have in your spare time. You could do a couple hours a week and you will see amazing instant results. You should, okay. you could have, you should have ten times as much business within a week or two. Okay. You really will. And these are not just like AdWords clicks. They're just like random people clicking on your site and then clicking off of it. These are people who are searching for exactly what you have to offer. And based on the search word that came up, the customers said they would search for. Right. So this is brilliant. This is absolutely a gold mine. Okay. Now, there's a couple more things really important. Um, okay. Some really, really, really important um, issues about this. When you see the content that other people have posted on these sites, you must mimic what they do. Okay. And what I mean by that is you must be real, must not be a spammer. This whole idea is not original. Um, there are software uh, systems that people have set up specifically for this purpose to manipulate Google. And like I said, everything, everything you could dream of has already been done. Don't even try to outsmart Google. Okay, Everything you could possibly dream of to manipulate Google has already been done. What we're doing is not, uh, it is, is not illegitimate. What we're doing is legitimate, and I'll explain why. This is really important. Be real. Don't be a spammer. Don't write comments that sound like ads, like a 10-second radio spot. No. Answer people's questions. If it's a forum or a blog, answer the question. If you're going to make a comment about an article on a, on a blog or something and you leave a comment, make a comment about the article. Make it real. Make it legitimate. What I always say is contribute something of value your comment must contribute something of value. Even if it's asking a good question, make it a good question. 
Make it a thoughtful response, a thoughtful comment. Answer somebody's question. Help somebody. Refer them to the right place or whatever. But you must contribute. This, this is the cost. You know, th there is a cost involved and besides just the time. Um, if you contribute something of value to the discussion, you will never be banned. Okay. Any system administrator who sees that you are a real person and you're, con you're contributing something of value with your comment, they're not going to think anything of it. They're going to because that's the whole purpose of it. That's the whole purpose of it. And as long as you're you're not abusing the system if you do that, and by doing that you get a, a legitimate you know your name and your website link, there everybody's fine with that right. as long as you're contributing something of value. Okay. If you're not, you could be. Um, they, they may very well assume that you're a robot. You're an automated system, and it's called. They even have a term for it. It's called comment spam. So there's this whole entire industry of comment spam. There's this whole genre of software designed to defeat comment spam. It's done by robots. Wow. But if you write a thoughtful comment that contributes something of value, they will know you're not a robot, and they will never ban you. Okay. And you will get the link that you need. Okay. Now. Uh, let me explain why this model, why this method works. Um, by first explaining um, this, okay, <laughs> you might ask, <laughs> can I just post links everywhere on the internet and get the same effect? Right. Can I? No. Okay. <laughs> you can. You, here's the yes and no. Here's the thing. You can certainly post links anywhere on the internet, and I recommend that you do. As long as they're not, you're not spamming. No comment spam. Spam. You're absolutely contributing something of value. Go crazy. Post your stuff everywhere. Every website, every forum, every blog that you participate in, everywhere on the internet. Make sure you've got your name and your link and your signature. If they don't have a signature, make your own. Just at the bottom of the comment, put your name and http colon slash slash your website dot com on everything you post everywhere. Twitter, absolutely everywhere, every forum, every blog, and all that. Yes, definitely do that, but don't spam. Uh, always contribute something of value, definitely. Now, will you get the same results as what I'm suggesting? No, okay. you won't. You'll get results, and it's all good, and it, uh, every penny counts, but you're talking about putting pennies in the jar, and I'm talking about putting hundreds in the jar. Right. Here's the difference. Here's why. Okay. In order to get these enormous results, two things are required. <coughs> Pardon me again. The websites that you get links from to have this superpower, two things. Number one, they have to be indexed by Google. Um, in my oversimplified explanation, I said Google scan reads every website on the internet. It's not true. Not every part of every website is read by Google. Some web website operators are intentionally make it so that parts of their site are not indexed by Google. And some websites are eliminated by Google. As I was telling you, Google can even ban certain websites. Right. So for whatever reason, not every website is indexed by Google and not every part of every website. Sometimes part of the website's indexed. Like for example, let's, I'm just making this up, okay, but like let's say CNN.com is indexed by Google. But the forums of CNN.com are not indexed by Google. Okay. So this is why you won't necessarily get the same results. Okay. okay, so not every website's indexed by Google, and it must be indexed by Google, otherwise what's the point? Right. You, get a you get a link posted in a section that Google doesn't read, it's not going to help you. Exactly. All right, the second thing is that the website must have the highest page rank possible. If, um, you know, if you post it in a forum on your neighborhood, you know, whatever, um, Little League Teams Forum or whatever, that's fine. You get one vote and it's all good and it doesn't hurt anything. But again, that's a penny and we're talking about hundreds. Mm -hmm. So the you want the links to come from websites. If you're going to put this, you know, you're going to it's going to involve time. Exactly. If you're going to put in so many hours a week doing this stuff. Exactly. You want to get the biggest bang for your buck, right? You want to get the hot. You want to get paid the highest dollars per hour, right? So don't work for minimum wage if you can if you can get $100 an hour. So what you want to do is get links from the highest page rank sites possible. Now, why does the method I just described work this way? Because by definition, all right, these sites are indexed by Google. Remember, we put in the search for the the, the your customer's number one um, search term. By the way, when we're done with all of those sites, 
then you go to number two, okay. number three, and number okay. four. So this is an unlimited project. Right, exactly. <laughs> There's no end. There's no end okay. until you're number one. And then you exactly. actually, even then you can't stop. Right, exactly. Because if you, if you stop, somebody else is going to watch my video here, and they're going to see that. Right. <laughs> they're going to beat you to it. They sure All right. are. All right, so you put in a search, and we went by what came up first. Right. So are the sites that come up on Google indexed by Google? Obviously. Yes. Yeah, because the fact that they're on Google right. is proof for sure they are indexed by Google. They were read by Google. That's right. why they came up. Exactly. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, uh, well, and actually one more thing about that, though. Even though the site may come up, their forum might not be indexed by Google. So you can test that. There's ways you can test it. You can go into the forum part or the blog part where you're going to comment. Highlight some text, not too long, but like maybe half of a sentence. Highlight some unique half of a sentence from the actual comment content and Google that and see if it comes up. Then you'll know that that part of the user content is also indexed by Google. Okay. That's another little sidebar trick. All right, then you know by definition that, the, that that content is indexed by Google, which is absolutely critical. Wasting your time. Right. I mean, not wasting it, but it's not that great. All right, the second thing is the highest page rank. Well... Obviously, we, we're going by number one, the first search term, number one first. So that is number one page rank, the highest page rank on the whole entire Internet Okay. on Google. So that, by definition, the, by doing it this way, you're getting your absolute certainty that it is indexed by Google, the content's indexed by Google, and especially if you actually highlight the content, make sure that the content part of it is indexed by Google, and that that website is the highest page rank. By definition, you've solved that. So it's not the same as just posting links randomly anywhere. Right. This is, this is like mega thousand times on steroids. Okay? Okay. So that is lesson one. What questions do you have? <laughs> <laughs> but I think they are all. I think they're all later in the in the game. I mean, okay. I think that. It, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me what you're saying. It totally does, and I, I I have a lot of work ahead of me. But so now you did like the question you about getting an email from one of those link exchange programs. Obviously, I answered that question for you, right? Exactly. Don't even participate. Any kind of link exchange programs, don't participate. Even SEO consultants, uh, be very, very leery. They better be able to, if I'm going to hire an SEO consultant, they better have proof that they have current clients, like, like at least two or three, like Fortune 500 companies as current clients, or else, I'm sorry. And they should be on the top of the page if you do. So. Well, they should, for sure. I mean, but that's, that, even that's not enough. I but mean, even they, their client. Well, their clients, definitely, but they might anyway because they're Fortune 500 company. I, I, Siri, I mean, if I was going to hire, I wouldn't hire an SEO. I wouldn't hire a consultancy to do this because I'm telling you how to do it. Anybody can do it. Right, and it, if, from what I've seen, I mean, I've, I've spoken to a lot of companies and they all say they want like a uh, $5,000 retainer and $1,500 yeah. a month. And like you said, they want you to bump up your Google AdWords budget so you're <sighs> paying all of this money. And, you, know, you know, what I would tell them is this. Don't touch my Google AdWords. Okay, you're an SEO consultant. has nothing to do with AdWords. That's like saying, well, I'm going to need you to spend $10,000 a month on billboards on 95. Like, what does that have to do with SEO? Google AdWords has nothing to do with SEO. You're gonna, no, because right. that's those are paid ads. Remember, the paid ads right. are showing up on the top and the side. They're, they're buying these for you. Right. And then they're going to get hits, and they're going to tell you. They're going to get random people traffic in your store, random people hitting your website that are not even looking for an apartment. Right. But you can buy clicks. You can buy hits, but they're random people. They're not even looking for an apartment. Right. They're going to click. You're going to pay. Exactly. You could have done that. First of all, you could have done it yourself. Secondly, it's not going to help your sales. And thirdly, that has nothing to do with getting your rank higher here. That's your your buying ads buying here is not going to help this. People get it confused. They're completely different things. Exactly. If you're trying to get somebody to improve your your reputation in the newspaper, you don't you know. You don't let them sell you billboards on the, on the interstate. They're completely different things. Search engine optimization has nothing to do with buying ads on Google. Okay. You can do that. Yourself. I mean, that's like um, that's a, an, an advertising optimization thing. That is a separate business, and they should not be connected, really, because they're just confusing you. They're intentionally confusing the public to, to say that, you know, well, yeah, you increase your, your ad budget, you're going to get more hits. Duh, what do I need you for? Exactly. 
Anybody can do that. Exactly. All right. I mean, there are ways to, to optimize your Google AdWords and all that. But you know what? Don't do that. Try this first. Right. Try this first because it costs nothing except your time. Your it's time. Exactly. absolutely free. Right. And, I mean, if you don't have the time, you can, you can tr if you can learn this yourself, you can train an assistant or a staff person to do it. It's not rocket science. But make sure they don't get lazy. Make sure they're contributing something of value in those comments because if they get labeled as a comment spam, it's going to hurt you. You're going to get banned, and it's going to defeat your intention. Okay. Uh, and another question. For example, uh, sometimes we get requests through our system, and it's spam. I mean, it's like spam, and it's it's a link to sex or whatever, or whatever. It's a, and it's a request that comes through. Do we get charged for those, or how does how does spam work? I mean, no. People just take. You're talking about email spam. I'm talking about email spam. Like we get it. our system is automated, where we mm -hmm. get a request, it comes through our system, and we see it. And 99% of the time, if we're not on the top of the list, it's spam. Uh, mm -hmm. And we do pay for Google AdWords. So, does that count as a Google AdWord? Is it? Oh no. With well, Google AdWords is different. That's different than search engine optimization. That's buying these ads on the right. Right. And you're paying. If I click that ad, this right. company just paid whatever they bid. Okay. I can click this one, and that company paid Google whatever they bid. Right. And that's how it works. Okay. So just by clicking on your website, they don't even have to send you a request. Right. Just they by just clicking click. on your website, you're paying. Okay. That's why it's really dangerous. To to advertise, I mean, Google AdWords is dangerous unless you know what you're doing because you can spend all the money your you and your ans your your descendants will ever make in all their lifetimes. Exactly. And Google still won't return your calls, but and you'll get billions of hits on your website that are not customers. They're not okay. buying anything. Won't, no. won't translate into income. Okay. There are ways. There are effective ways to use Google AdWords, obviously, um, and we'll do that on another show. Yes. But this is SEO, and this is not paid ads right. we're talking about. Which we'll, is great. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll do that too. Okay. But this is different. This is getting your your free listing to come up first. That And that is, first of all, it's a lot better than the AdWords because people ignore that. I, I, I always ignore that. Unless there's something that really catches my eye, I ignore that stuff. I go for the real results because I know that that's the most important. But that's yeah. because you're, you know, you know technology. Yeah, but I, I think the average person, I mean, I don't. It depends on where my yeah, they eye might, goes. They might not I know. Might, yeah, exactly. They I might, might go there. Yeah. Exactly. I might not know. That's true. I mean, I'm not saying to not use Google AdWords. It's, it's, it's. A, it can be a very effective marketing tool, but it's a completely different science about how you optimize that. Very, and it's very, very, very risky. You can and expensive. Very, very expensive. Right. Yeah. It's very expensive. Um, but I do have another one. One last question. For example, if you do accept those links from the the mm -hmm. person that sent you a link, let's swap links, and you do mm -hmm. accept. Are are some of those, or or at any any time, does uh, does a link uh, link up to spam? I mean, can a link be spam? No. Well. Or can it add spam to your technology? The reason I'm asking you this is because our computer programmer. Uh, we've gone through so many, but the one that we're currently working with said that he believes that the links that we have on our site are linked to spam, or there's some kind of um, spam link to it. it uh, well, it could be they could be linking to websites that invade computers with viruses that are used for spam and so on and so on. But not, I don't think it's related directly to you receiving email spam. No, but I just I wouldn't participate in any link exchanges and any you know any. Any link exchange offers that I get, I just um, decline. ignore. Right. Yeah, I just delete the message. Just delete it. I don't even reply. Okay. I don't even decline. Okay. I just ignore it. Delete. You know, filter it so that it just automatically deletes it in my email. I don't look at that. So the ones that you would link up with are the ones that are reputable that you know, or for example. No, I wouldn't look up. I would not link up with any. 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 Unless it's one of these using this right. method. Okay. If it's one of the top ten on right. the on the results or here. The top twelve. Yeah. Top twelve, right? Correct. And I mean, those are the ones that I I wouldn't link exchange though. It's not a link exchange. I'm not linking to them in exchange no, for them. I'm just exactly. putting, comments, putting on comments on their site, and they're linking to me, and I'm not putting links on my site to them. Okay. If you put a whole bunch of links on your site right. to other unrelated sites, they could ban your site from Google. Okay. You don't want to do Got that. It. So don't do link exchange. And we're out of time. Oh. We're going to do this again, though. We're going to yeah, talk about Google great. AdWords. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much for being here. Oh. Enjoy. Yes. And send me feedback, Bruce at BruceWagner.com, or just go to BruceWagner.com and click on Contact Me or Bruce Wagner on Twitter. Follow me and send me your feedback. Give me your ideas. Maybe you have better ideas than I do. Anyway, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.